Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Green. And I'm gonna try to share my screen. Thank you so much for uh, having me here. Um, just a short introduction. Um, I am um, honored to share and be in the same space uh, with powerful panelists. I also want to thank Mr. Sell, a friend and a community leader in Florida who invited me to speak uh, at this great uh, panel. I am Basma Alawi, a former refugee who turned to be a refugee advocate within the first year I got resettled in the state of Florida 10 years ago. Soon later, became a Florida refugee delegate to speak on behalf of all the refugees in the state of Florida. And almost three years ago, I entered the human rights uh, field as Florida refugee organizer with We Are All America and housed with the Florida Immigrant Coalition. And just to give a really a short introduction about uh, these amazing organization who I am part of, uh, starting with the Refugee Congress, uh, which was founded in 2011 on the 60th anniversary of the Refugee Convention to, co to convene resettled refugees from all 50 states. Today, Refugee Congress is the only national organization in the US led by former refugees like me to advocate for refugees. Refugee Congress members in all 50 states advocate with their elected officials for welcoming communities. And We Are All America, which is I am the Florida refugee organizer with We Are All America in the state of Florida, uh, was founded in 2017 in response to the U.S. cutting its resettlement program to the lowest level ever during the worst international refugee crisis in modern history. We Are All America affirms our historical role as a refugee uh, protection uh, sorry, uh, works, uh, works to uphold and strengthen our nation's commitment to welcome and protect those seeking freedom, safety, and refuge in the United States. We organize people across religion and culture differences to build inclusive community where we are all belong. And to go back to our subject, to speak about what's happening in, uh, in the global now with refugees and give a snap shot about refugees in COVID-19. Today, nearly 80 million people forcefully displaced, more than 1% of the world population. 26 million of them are refugees, more than 4 million asylum seekers globally. Nearly 46 million are internally displaced. Nearly 90% of refugees live in developing and low-income countries with the fastest growing infection rates. What makes refugees more unique during COVID lack for, there is a lot of lacks that we already have, but during COVID, these kind of needs are increased, starting from lack of medical supplies and therapeutic, lack of accurate information about how to protect themselves. Vaccine nationalism may limit access for our communities. Uh, and also this kind of population often not included in country specific pandemic reopen plans. Refugees are, impact, are impacted not just by COVID, but also by the fear that is causing around the world. As this quote from report by Refugees International shows, the very concept of refuge is under assault. In response to the pandemic, it is estimated that 164 countries across the globe have limited or cut off access to asylum. In some cases, government have clearly weaponized public health concerns to advance nativist political agenda. And the United States is a case in point. Example, some examples of uh, organizations who have been responding uh, globally to the uh, crisis of COVID, uh, starting with World uh, Health Organization and UNHCR and the UN Refugee Agency, partner, partnering to strengthen public health services to millions uh, of forcefully displaced people. UNHCR launched a global 255 million appeal to lessen the impact of COVID-19 outbreaks within refugee communities, limited entry into and exit from refugee camps, and efforts to allow refugee professionals within foreign credential to serve as essential health workers. And that's happened in many places like United Kingdom, Piro, and Argentina. To go and visit how is uh, uh, refugees in COVID and, and the uh, 
and the, uh, and all um, the struggle that's happening for the refugees in the U.S. So the U.S. has resettled about to three million refugees since 1980, the signing of the Refugee Act. From the 1980 of 2000 until 2016, the average number of yearly refugee arrival to the U.S. was 95,000. This year cap. It was supposed to be 18,000. We were supposed to bring 18,000 refugees in 2020. But up to date, we have received 9,772. And of course, part of it because of COVID. In this slide, we try to really uh, bring in what kind of uh, impact uh, refugees have faces and asylum have faces during COVID. Starting from physical health, we have higher risk of getting COVID-19 due to the overcrowded housing, underlying health condition, lack of access to health care, being essential workers. You may also heard about the outbreaks of the COVID in meat packing plants that employees, refugees, many refugees have been affected. When we go to jobs and income, Refugees International founded that over 60% of employed refugees work in sectors highly impacted by the pandemic. And refugees have high rates of small business honors, ownership and small businesses have been deeply affected. Going back to resettled and family reunification, we have declined in refugee admission means thousands of families in the U.S. are still waiting to reunite with their loved ones. And of course, we should not forget mental health because refugees have been traumatized by quarantines. And I have written before in the beginning, I think in May, um, how the quarantine have bringing memories uh, of for, to refugees like me or even in times of, of refugees who left war. Other crises in the U.S. have been happening, like the uprising in the response to police violence against black people, hurricanes and wildfires, and COVID together with these crises are severely increasing stress for refugees. How is the U.S. Uh, responding and what kind of challenging our community uh, have been facing? The government responding, starting with uh, support financially, uh, with different kind of act like the care act, state and local relief funds, eviction moratoriums, and expanding testing availability. But how? What kind of challenges our community is facing? Even though with these great responses, the government relief, even though it's available, but not to all families, so the resources are limited. Refugees face barriers to access resources because of language barrier and fear of accessing these resources. Still challenging with testing and treatment, increased in, uh, in xenophobia and anti-Asian uh, racism. And lastly, closing the borders. Even though many organization um, and community members have been responding. Refugees are also responding to all of this. We have our, these are my colleagues who work with me alongside around the country. We have many projects have been done around the country that led by ref, former refugees, starting with partnering with local nonprofits. You see George in the picture partnered with the New York Cares to distribute masks and healthcare information to emergency response like Dauda in Louisiana with his organization bought humanitarian aid to St. Charles uh, City after the storm and many other amazing projects that have been led by refugees. And again, we should not forget essential workers, doctors volunteering at COVID testing sites, many refugees and immigrants serving as healthcare workers, teachers, service workers, farm workers, and more. The COVID pandemic has reminded us that we are all interconnected and interdependent. We must use this time to come together, embrace our communities and work to build a better future. Refugee Congress stands ready and willing. Let's work together to fight against discrimination and, in, and, and for justice. And this is a quote from one of our Refugee Congress delegates. Refugee, so what we have been learning 
there are many lessons that we have been learning, but also there are more to learn later. But for now, these are some of the things that I was able to highlight. One, refugees face unique vulnerabilities and challenges in public health crisis. Refugees are also assets during the public health crisis. Refugees have solution when refugees are allowed to practice their profession through improved routes to certification and license with their overseas credential, communities benefit from these skills. Expanding economic inclusion benefits everyone. Assistance to refugees enter the labor market and serves an essential worker role as doctor, nurses, caregiver, scientists, cleaners, and more. Benefits everyone. Digital and technology access can be a matter of life and death. Language access needs to expand beyond majority languages spoken. Refugees need assistance navigating the system to access available support and fundings. Investing in former refugees, leadership, and organizing on the ground to essential to, produ to producing inclusive policies and practices. And I, again, and lastly, story sharing and the voices of ref refugees are important to change making. Thank you so much.